Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to mold 59. This mold is a smaller one with two small holes so I pour it up and gently tip it out. This was one of those molds where it's not satisfying to tip out, it just sort of gradually drips out and you just have to monitor each mold as you go to see if it's dripping out nicely. I open it up to reveal another set of two birds. This time it is a different style of bird, a very similar to an earlier reveal where they were both sort of a similar shape. Um, I don't know my species of birds, but maybe in the comments you can let me know what you think they might be. They do look really similar to like a fairy blue wren that we have in Australia, but again, I don't know my bird species. It is an Alberta's A407 mold. It doesn't say the year it was made, but if you're looking for it, that's the number to search for. I decided to give myself a bit of a challenge this time because I honestly cannot top those earlier two birds from another reveal. They were so beautiful. I put all these beautiful detail floral patterns on them and I just didn't even want to try and compete. So instead this week I decided I would do something a little bit more simple. The fundamental of it was to use two colours to create a bold pattern with a little bit of detail and I wanted to do this because in an earlier discussion I spoke about doing art and you don't have to buy all the colors all in one go and I guess I wanted to demonstrate how a two color pattern can still look really vibrant you can still do a lot with it and I also wanted to I guess have like a contrast with those earlier birds to see how a little bit more of a bolder pattern would translate on this piece compared to that really fine line detail pattern. I'm definitely, I definitely love small details, but I did just want to see and use this as an experiment. For this video, I've chosen the color yellow as my base color, and then I've picked another color for each set of birds just to demonstrate, I guess, like the diversity of how a popping pattern could look um, if you can only afford to buy a couple of colors. So the way I am executing a pattern only using two colors was that I painted the whole bird the yellow and then I'm adding the darker color on top and then I'm outlining the flowers that I'm painting with a yellow again and it should just be a nice subtle little outlining enough to just give it a little bit of depth to sort of unflatten I guess these flat shapes these flat bold shapes and just give it a little bit of detail with minimal color work. I decided to challenge myself this week because when I did speak about using only a few colors when I first started, I didn't actually do that in that video. So it wasn't a very good demonstration of what you can actually do with just a few colors. I think it's a really important practice, not only when you're starting out um, to try and build up your skills with using minimal colors to see how detailed you can get something, but also when you're building your skills to go back to sort of, I guess, like fundamentals and trying things out and seeing if you've got a new take or a new spin on the things that you used to do when you first started. As artists, I feel like you're always growing and exploring and experimenting that sometimes it's nice to, I guess, like revisit old ways that you used to do things or old skills or even old projects to see how you put a new spin on it, how you adapt all the skills that you've built up to your work. My work is so different to what it used to be just because I have grown so much as an artist in what I like and dislike in my work as well as what I like to illustrate. All my skills have grown so much and I've flowed with where my art practice moves to and so I think it's just a really nice practice this week to just give it a go with two colors and see what I get and what results come out of that as well as I guess being a light to you to remind you that if you do want to start an art practice and you're worried that you're going to have to buy all these materials and all these supplies that you can just start with a couple of colors you don't have to get the full range and I guess break your pocket just to be able to give something a go anyway I'll stop flapping my gums for a minute and let you enjoy the painting and then I'll chime back in when it's time to glaze
Okie dokie artichokey, it's time to glaze. So on these pieces, they are on a bit of an angle where their tail droops down. So what I'm doing is glazing and leaving that base of the bird where the hole is unglazed. And then I pop them onto the shelf with their tail drooping down. I was a little bit nervous because the two bluebirds didn't have quite a flat, I didn't carve it flat enough and I was worried it was going to stick to the kiln and roll over but fortunately it did not which was such a great relief when I opened the kiln. I unpacked them all and here is the finished result. As you can see on the patterning already, the yellow line work that I've done on each of the flowers is really subtle but it gives it enough that you can see some texture and detail of the flower. For just two colors, I really like how these have turned out, but if I had the choice, I would use a lot more color and I would use a lot more detail and maybe have the flowers a lot smaller, but for what they are and for what this challenge is, I do really like them. I think that they look really good as a set. Here are my wobbly bluebirds. Uh, you can see on the bottom, I didn't carve it flat enough. So that's why they're sort of wobbling around. The other ones I remembered to carve nice and flat, but these ones I missed. But that's okay, you learn and you fix mistakes in future. I love the orange bird, but I think that's just because I've been crushing on the color orange at the moment. And I really like how the orange and yellow give it a really nice warmth. The green was an interesting choice. I wanted to just see whether a green flower would look really cool. I kind of challenged my perception of the use of the color green because I usually only use it for sort of leafy details. But otherwise, this is my example of using two colors. Thank you so much for watching and let me know what you think of the mold and also using two colors in the comments. I love to read your reactions. I nearly dropped one of the birds here. But here is your sneak peek for the next reveal. You can pop some guesses in the comments if you like. I'll see you then.